everyone welcome to this psychology lecture series in this video we are going to talk about parametric tests a parametric test is a hypothesis testing procedure in every parametric test you have to use statistics to estimate the parameter of the population parametric tests mainly focus on the difference between the mean parametric tests are mainly used for quantitative data or for continuous variables some of the types of parametric tests are t test anova pearson's coefficient of correlation and z test in this video we are going to take a deeper look at the t test or it's generally called as the student's t test it was developed by professor W S Gusset in 1908 who published the statistical papers under the pen name student students t test is applied when samples are small and when population variances are not known some of the advantages of parametric tests are they don't require much data and the next is it's quite easy to calculate them and it provides all the necessary information and the parametric test can perform quite well when they have been spread over and each group happens to be different some of the disadvantages of parametric tests are parametric tests are not valid when it comes to small data sets another disadvantage of parametric test is that the size of the sample is always very big which makes it difficult to carry out the whole test and the next disadvantage is that what you are studying here shall be represented through the medium itself t tests are carried out when the population standard deviation is unknown we use the t distribution because the unknown population standard deviation is now a value we must estimate let us take an example of one sample t test in a population the average iq is 100 a team of scientists wants to test a new medication to see if it has either a positive or negative effect on intelligence or no effect at all a sample of 30 participants who have taken the medication has a mean of 140 with a standard deviation of 20 the question is we have to find if the medication has affected intelligence first we have to define our null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis a null hypothesis is nothing but a statement about a population parameter in statistics A population parameter is a number that describes something about an entire group or population. In our case, the null hypothesis is 100. H0 or null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis is a statement that directly contradicts the null hypothesis. H1 or the alternative hypothesis is not equal to 100. Usually, the researcher takes 0.05 as the alpha value while conducting the t test the level of significance refers to the minimum probability that there will be a false rejection of the null hypothesis now let's calculate the degrees of freedom it can be calculated with the formula n minus 1 in our case 30 minus 1 will be 29 since we have 30 participants we took the alpha value as 0.05 this is the t table and in this table the first row represents the degrees of freedom value and remember we have taken 0.05 as our alpha value and it is a two tailed test the difference between the one tailed t test and two tailed t test is that the one tailed test sees only the negative 
or just the positive side of the curve. But the two-tailed t-test can be used to get results which can either be positive and be negative. Since in our question, we can either get a value that is negative or positive and from that our conclusion is inferred. So now we have to find the corresponding values with respect to the degrees of freedom 29 and alpha value 0 0.05. So here we get 2.0452. This is the critical value we are going to use. Now we are going to calculate the t value. If the t is less than negative 2.0452 or greater than 2.0452, then we'll have to reject the null hypothesis. So let's calculate t. The formula for one sample t test is sample mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation divided by square of sample size. Here, our sample mean is 140, population mean is 100, standard deviation is 20 and the sample size is 30. And if we calculate this, we'll get t as 10.96. So the rule is that if t is less than negative 2.045 or greater than 2.045, then we have to reject the null hypothesis. As our t value is greater than 2.045, we are rejecting the null hypothesis. So our conclusion is that medication has affected intelligence. Now let us take a look at the two sample t test through an example. Our situation is like if people are listening to quiet classical music are better able to concentrate than people listening to popular music with lyrics. To test this hypothesis, we shall select two groups and ask them to complete 35 tasks requiring concentration. Let the people in group 1 will do these tasks while listening to quiet classical music, while the people in the other will do it while listening to popular music with lyrics. This is actually a one-tiled t-test as we are testing if one group is able to perform better than the other group. So the word better indicates that we'll get a higher value. So it's a one-tiled test. Here the null hypothesis is that people listening to quiet classical music will not be able to complete more tasks than people who are listening to popular music with lyrics. The alternative hypothesis states that people listening to quiet classical music will be able to complete more tasks than people who are listening to popular music with lyrics. The first group has 15 members taking up those tasks while listening to quiet classical music. These are the number of tasks completed by each. The second group has 13 members trying to complete the tasks while listening to popular music with lyrics. These are the number of tasks completed by the members of group 2. If we calculate the mean standard deviation, the sample size of group 1 is 15 and the mean of the completed task of group 1 will be 23.13. And if we calculate standard deviation for group 1 values, we'll get 2.924. The sample size of group 2 will be 13 and if we calculate the mean for their attempted tasks, we'll get 20.77 and if we calculate standard deviation for that group, we'll get 3.787. So, to calculate our t value, we use the formula mean 1 minus mean 2 divided by the square root of the square of standard deviation of the first group divided by the sample size of the first group plus the square of standard deviation of the second group 
divided by the sample size of the second group. If we substitute the values, we will get a value of 1.824. So, 1.824 is our T. To calculate the degrees of freedom of these two groups, we take the sample size of the smaller group and apply the formula n-1 and here we'll get 12. Let us now take the T distribution table and mark the degrees of freedom as 12 as we are advised to take 0 0.05 as our appropriate level of significance. Let us find the value corresponding to 0 0.05. The value corresponding to 0 0.05 and 12 is 1.782 which is lesser than our T value. So the result will be the alternative hypothesis which states that people listening to quiet classical music will be able to complete more tasks than people who are listening to popular music with lyrics. I hope you like these videos. Please share these videos with everyone who are preparing for this exam. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.